Hey folks, Danny here at Partey. So want to cover off. Now this is a panel that I'm going to show you uh, that Kelly, my wife, rolled last night uh, as an example, just to give you a display of somebody who doesn't roll these things. Uh, so she, <laughs> she said her tagline was, so easy an amateur can do it. So, uh, but what I'm showing you here is that the actual panel that she painted has a lot of creases and seams where the this is a, just a cheap foam panel i think we picked it up at dollar general and it has divots and things like that in it but for this video and i'm going to have two that are going to be uploading today one is around the application but this one we're going to cover application surfaces okay so they're really just very summarized things you need to remember when using parte coatings uh, as far as application services or substrates as we refer to them. So your substrate, uh, regardless of whatever it is, okay, and we'll cover different types of stuff, uh, you know, general categories anyway, uh, but regardless of whatever it is, you're going to want to paint it on a flat surface. In other words, you're going to want to make sure that it lays on a very rigid flat surface, not something that's got a lot of give or bounce to it. So when you roll this, because there's one step in it where you're just going to put a little bit of pressure, right? And if you have, say, a screen that you made that's a pine frame or something along that line, and you put material on it, you painted that material, when you lay it flat, the material on either side of your middle bar is going to sag. And even if you have two bars in the back, it's still going to sag a little bit whenever you try to put pressure on your screen. So my recommendation is that if you go to paint or repaint uh, our formula on top of a painted screen uh, you're going to want to remove the screen from the frame and paint it let it do its thing and then reattach it okay and this stuff is very flexible so it'll give you plenty of flex it doesn't uh, dry rigid or anything like that but let's talk about surfaces so my recommendation would be to use a manufactured screen a cheap one uh, find you a fixed frame screen uh, white uh, just a cheap manufactured screen uh, say something like an ikea uh, show maven makes a good one as a matter of fact the last two that i've used were show maven uh, and those i bought uh, for church screens uh, 120 inch and i think the total cost with tax and everything was still just a little under 150 dollars so not a very expensive screen a zero edge frame uh, and work phenomenally for what we need it for. If you are planning to use a manual pull down or a motorized projection screen, I'm going to ask that you hold off. Uh, the reason being is because we haven't had the opportunity to test that. Now I've ordered one as of last night, uh, so it should be coming uh, probably sometime this weekend or early next week, and we'll go ahead and do that. I'm going to let it cure. This material cures over about a seven day period, so I'm going to allow it to cure that full time and then we'll run a test and make sure that there's no issues. I don't expect any with any kind of motorized screen or pull down screen, uh, primarily because if you watch the Screen Innovations video, you'll notice when they talked about the black border, how they print that on there uh, because they want to keep as much uh, as far as texture or um, thickness you know of material off the screen this material rolls extremely thin even after four rolls you're going to see it's a very thin coat uh, it looks more like a skin that's just kind of shrunk to your surface uh, so you'll want to watch that it it's not that it shrinks so much i'm not concerned about the shrinkage uh, related to to those screens uh, but i want to make sure that we don't have a build up that could cause your motor or your roll or your aperture mechanism uh, to to clog up so or to warp or anything like that so just to be safe more safe than sorry uh, we'll do that test and then we'll we'll let you know kind of how that works and i don't expect any kind of issue whatsoever i really don't folks but once again i'd always rather check that before you know we just go out and vocally say it now our past ones never had an issue but this is a brand new formula all of our formulas have been revised so i uh, just want to make sure that that's going to be the case that there's not going to be any issues all right so I've had people ask me about all kinds of surfaces, but basically they, they kind of boil down to three. 
Okay, now, you've got stuff like people have asked about styrofoam and things like that. I, I would never recommend that you use something like styrofoam. Um, if you had an issue, you can end up breaking your screen in half or, or a corner off of it or something like that. Um, you know, if that's your thing, hey, kudos to you, but I would never recommend it as a optimal screen surface. I've had people ask me about wood. Uh, not a very big fan of wood. Um, Unless you use a sanded surface or a very clean, you know, surface as far as like to rub your hand across it. You don't want divots. You don't want little porous holes. Um, the What I term as sort of the grain slivers that are in there because you'll see that. You know, if you go to coat it over wood and you don't have that sanded and primed really well, uh, you would see all of that texture. So if, as long as it's smooth and it's primed, uh, no problem. As a matter of fact, I've got a couple of people I know that use um, uh, four by eight quarter inch uh, plywood, uh, sanded it down, and then coated it with a nice primer, and it works fine. Uh, these were the old coatings, but this would do no different. Uh, it would work fine. Um, as far as material, what I would also say is that it's all about the priming. You don't want to use material that has a lot of coarse texture to it because it's going to introduce micro shadows across your surface, uh, which will eventually, uh, whenever you finish, it's going to make your surface a little darker than it should be because of all the micro shadow. So my recommendation would be that if you use a material, use a material that isn't super coarse and that you prime it very well. I'm not talking about just putting a little bit on the surface so that it saturates in and it's okay, well, I'm primed, but you can still see basically the color of the material. Uh, you want a good uh, primed surface where you feel very little to no texture, okay? Uh, and then you're good to go. PVCs. PVCs are fine. Um, once again, I would prime it. Uh, before you start uh, for two purposes really not just for light coming from the back because a lot of your PVCs could be transparent um, but also so you get the maximum reflectivity because otherwise like a rear projection screen a lot of your lights going to be going through the screen and hitting the back of your wall uh, so you really don't want that uh, it's just a waste of light so you want to make sure that you have it primed very very well uh, otherwise, guys, as you can see here, this stuff performs very clean. Now, you're looking across this video. Uh, I'm, I've shown uh, highlight, mid-light, uh, dark, uh, just so that you can see how this screen performs and all. And remember, this is a gray screen. It's not a black screen. It's a gray screen, and it holds its contrast in very high light. As a matter of fact, in the maximum light, which this is showing now, uh, you're looking at somewhere in the ballpark of at the top half of the screens about 180 lux so very bright screen I've taken this up to 400 lux uh, not front facing okay front uh, 400 lux side or top angle uh, and you're going to to be fine uh, it does very well in light for a gray screen extremely well uh, surprisingly well um, but you know, these are designed to be optical screens. This is not a paint. Okay, we've said from the get-go, this is not a paint. It doesn't have any paint into it, in it whatsoever. As a matter of fact, this is more closely related to your grandfather's leisure suit than it is paint. And that's the truth. The true story. It's much more closely associated with your grandfather's leisure suit. Uh, and the way that this works is that you're going to... to uh, apply four optical layers okay uh, you can apply at the end of it and I talk about this in the display for uh, the the actual application that Kelly does here uh, but you can put a fifth coat if you so choose um, shouldn't be required uh, but if you do put a fifth coat generally you get just a subtle amount more brightness so a fifth coat can actually help you out especially if you're going to be watching it in brighter light all right, so I'll be uploading our application video. I'm going to dub it because Kelly and I got to chuck, <laughs> we got to laughing at a number of points. So it'll be dubbed, but it'll have the information you need. You guys take care.